So you know that your girl is a full on history nerd, right? Okay, if you didn't know that, that is going to become completely evident at this point. So today I wanna to talk to you about She Rules number two, right? So you know that the reason why I am who I am and I've been able to have, dare I say, success. Yes, I will call myself successful. The reason why I've been able to average over 500 referrals a year uh, for six years in a row in my business, have an incredible marriage, uh, not just be a business owner, but a business investor in other businesses is because I write my own rules. Like legit, no joke. That's what people recognize about me when I go to mentors and I say, hey, can you coach me? Can you help me? They say, you write your own rules. So anyway, that's where the she rules came from. So today, <laughs> I'm gonna go full on geek on you. She rules number two is have unshakable faith in yourself. Oh my gosh. Let me say that again. Have unshakable faith in yourself. So, well, that is something that I honestly, I don't have that every single day of my life, but I recognize when I don't have it and I look to other women, I look to other stories to draw inspiration. Okay. So today I want to talk to you about a lady named Margaret Rudkin. Have you ever heard of her? Nope, probably not. But after today, you will not be able to forget that name. So Margaret Rudkin was a lady that in the early 1900s, I, look, I told you I was a full on history nerd. So in the early 1900s, what happened is Margaret's son had uh, was mal malnourished, right? So she could not get the right nutrients in his body and he was really having a hard time like the doctor would come in and say you need to get more nutrients in his diet you need to find a way to get more vitamins more all just more of this stuff that he needed into his system and so at this point in the united states right it's like the early 1900s this was when white bread <laughs> I told you I was gonna be a nerd, but hang on, this is amazing. This was when white bread was first introduced, sliced bread, all this stuff. But at that time, the way they got white bread was they basically removed any nutrients whatsoever from wheat, okay? So how crazy is that? But anyway, we won't get into all that. So what happened was Margaret was so desperate to get these nutrients into her malnourished son. Okay. So she knew I've got to figure this out. I've got to figure this out. There was a doctor that was coming to the house and he's like, you know, you gotta, you gotta get this for your son, whatever, because again, medicine and food and all that was different in the early 1900s. And so she had unshakable faith in herself maybe not for her, but for her child. And she said, I will figure this out. So what she started doing is she started messing around with different bread recipes. Okay, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. And in an old family cookbook, she found a recipe for a wheat bread, like an old wheat bread. She started to make it a couple of times. She tried it, tried it. It was dry. It was, wasn't good, right? Her son wasn't going to eat it. It wasn't working. So she kept playing with the recipe and tweaking the recipe just a little bit until she came up with a bread that she made at home, right? This was during the depression, right? At home with the ingredients that she had that she could get. She came up with a bread that really helped improve her son's um, her son's physical being, right? He was started getting nutrients. He started growing better. He started thriving. And the doctor said, what are you doing? What are you doing? And she said, well, I'm making this bread for him. I'm making this bread for him. So the doctor started, get this, the doctor started prescribing her bread to his other patients, like saying, hey, you gotta talk with Margaret, Margaret, you gotta get Margaret's, Margaret's bread, like she'll make it for you and she will sell it to you. So out of complete desperation and unshakable faith in herself that she was going to figure out how to get this bread, how to, how to create a bread to get the nutrients into her son, she created a business. Do you have any idea what that business's name is? <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, Margaret Rudkin is the founder of Pepperidge Farm. <gasps> what? 
I know. I love a good American story. <laughs> okay, I'm geeking out. I'm sorry. I got real loud there for a second. But Margaret is such an incredible woman. There's another part of the story that during World War I, Okay, so, and I'm not trying to make any good guys, bad guys here or whatever, right? But Margaret didn't just know food, she knew business, right? So at this point during World War I, her, she was growing her business, she had a business, she was getting more intellectually smart with um, all the different things around business. And so during World War I, what happened was the president was appointing certain people to what's called ration certain things, okay? So they picked, the uh, president picked someone to be in charge of all of the rations for different things. And he happened to pick the gentleman that own Wonder Bread to be like, hey, you're going to be responsible for rationing the flour. You know, tell us what we need and how we do this. He was like the head of it. Tell us what to do and how, what we need to do to keep the um, companies that make bread in the United States in production. Like, what do they need? Because we're going to give them what they need and then we got to send everything else to our troops, okay? So, unfortunately... Um, the gentleman who was in charge of all that used it as an opportunity to get the recipes of his competitors. Oh, <gasps> no. I know, right? I love a good plot, thick plot twist, whatever. So he is using this and basically going to the different flour or um bread manufacturers in the United States and saying, I need your recipe because we need to find out how many, like what rations to give you, what products to give you. Well, they come to Margaret and they're like, yo, Margaret, we need your recipe. And she was smart enough to know um, this is intellectual property. My product is different. I cannot be turning my recipe over to the competition. So you know what she did? <laughs> she basically wrote a letter back that said, I don't think so. No, okay. That's basically what happened. But of course, being a tactful woman the way she is, she wrote a letter back and basically said to them, listen, we're just a small bread manufacturer here in upstate New York, right? We don't, uh, we don't need a lot. Whatever you can give us, we'll appreciate it. Whatever you can spare for our small um, manufacturing, our small business, we will be grateful and we will take whatever you can give us. And we, we want to leave as much as we can for the troops, right? She completely turned it around. And in the most poetic and nice way possible, she told them, I don't think so. And how are they going to argue with that? So she stood up for herself. She had unshakable faith in herself and said, "Uh, -uh you're not getting my recipe. And I love it. So on the days during the times in my life when I do not have that unshakable faith, what do I do? I draw wisdom from other people. I draw, ins draw inspiration from other people. So when you find yourself, hey, I am really not, you know, I know my dream is incredible. I know this is going to be great. I know I was put here to do amazing things. But if you are not feeling it, here's what I want. You, we all get down, right? We all get on what we call a struggle bus. But I want to encourage you, like I do, to uh, study other women in business, other businesses that have succeeded, maybe other people in your field. Study them, get inspiration from them, and I promise, I promise, I promise, it will help you have unshakable faith in yourself, which is the she rules number two. And if you need help with referrals, or you need help with any of that, what you have with your business, reach out to me. I have resources for you. Talk to you soon.